prologue. Our application to become an alien. List all the organizations you have ever joined or which you have been a member. List all publications which you've ever contributed to as a writer. He looked, I swear to God, like Gene Dean of all great fame, a boyish attorney of Richard Nixon. He was probably younger than I was. I was thirty five. His grey suit was immaculate. He fingered that was a man good. He shaved so closely that his cheeks were close to baby pink. He smelled of aftershave and breath mints. By the standards of nineteen seventy nine, his hair was as unusually short, a colourless near blonde, and nearly neatly parted. It may be five years. He would be bald. He was some kind of under assistant attaché, responsibility for immigration. His eyes were cold. He clearly felt part of that responsibility to keep individuals like me from becoming resident aliens in the United States. So the wall was a photograph. The wall was a photograph of Jimmy Carter, a light wood frame. In a year or so, it would be replaced by one of Chip Ronald Reagan. Although neither of us knew it at the time, the election had yet to come, though Britain had already made its turn in the right to the right. Margaret Thatcher had replaced Jim Callaghan. I was getting out of town. I left Jean Dean, John Dean across the desk with a small American flag attached to a pen. A pencil set found a way to stop me. I was going to live in New York City, where I could film bars with Hank Williams and Lewis Jordan on the jukebox, multiple TV stations that ran all night. A man could lawfully drink until four o'clock in the morning. I looked at the questionnaire. John Dean had pushed across the desk at me. Long, hugely detailed, indicated I was in trouble. Most applicants for resident alien status issued a notorious green card to find themselves subject to either intense scrutiny. I was marrying a U.S. citizen. It should have been only mildly harder. Attaining a visa. Drugs? No. Communists? No. Antichrist? No. Syphilis? No. TB? Congrum? Congenital insanity. Criminal record. Burden on society. No, no, and no. Questions asked by U.S. immigration. Exactly a threat American paranoias regarding foreigners from its Isles Island days, 1890s to present. The problem is that none of the U.S. immigration with restrictions were ever dumped. Old ones remain, while others are simply layered on top, producing a weird bureaucratic ecology. Once... One was ploughed through this catalogue of nations' irrational fears. Papers are sent away and run for the big CIA fruit machine in Frankfurt. And for the majority of applicants, that's all she's wrote. Unfortunately, in my case, the big CIA fruit machine took one look and came up with three lemons. I was asked to join John Dean. Report to John Dean. Your interview took place... At the embassy of Grover Square, a room very much like the one in which John Vernon threatens to clean Eastwood and Dirty Harry, or realizes is in trouble. To, de- to be denied president status at this point would be somewhere between an embarrassment and a disaster. I just got married, my best friend Felix Dennis, then in the making his first handful of millions, a thrown a lavish wedding reception, complete with insultable champagne and white Rolls Royce. My drunken mates all present, plus a goodly selection of what was lost be called the underground. The figures from the stone fringed immediate rock and roll past, Felix of Friendly Dimension, Embassy Road, the Western Kings, Kingston, and Rats Gardens for the Bash. Next door was a Roman Russian embassy at the bottom of the heavy guarded maximum security street stood Kingston Palace, future home of Charles and Di. At one point, the proceedings of the helicopter landed in the grounds at the palace, possibly being Charles' home for his tea. After a fair like that, not any, not any wedding, but a tactic, tacit f- world party. How was I going to turn around and tell Felix? Sorry, I'm not going after all. I had said my goodbyes, disposed of my stuff, but he'd given up flat and burned my mythical bridges. Now this large boulder that appeared in the final stretch of the road, I called, I had calls for a cold sweat. All the propercussions to which you have contributed to writer, the cold eyes seemed to look, looked at me, though I was some kind of specimen. Remind me of a young Roy Collin, in black and white clips of McCarthy hearings, lurking and sinister, behind the raving sinister. 
to, from Wiz coating. In the eighties, I would see a lot more of them. That this attached dark, shark glaze are common in Manhattan among the yuppies. That yuppies of Wall Street are ones determined to be modern millions by thirty. Guess why John Dean was Washington State Department version. I had no time to wonder what he ultimately wanted. I reckon my brain said to what instant action prank or problematic the CNI will ever have fixed on as a possible reason for deem me too dangerous to burst if to get my housekeeping in New York City. So that my housekeeping in New York City. God only knew there was enough from those which to choose. Almost sixteen years since my first night in the house of Chinese landlord, I had lost I had lent momentum to a good deal of mayhem, and the possible list of destruction of a national TV show, show had taken a lot of blame, a little way unreasonably. I thought of the trashing of one of the most ambitious rock festivals. I had also organised a very bizarre rock festival of my own. I had edited the country's largest circulation underground newspaper for a number of years. I had dragged in the old Bailey to defend almost against major obscenity charges, a comic book got pointed push, but it couldn't count, could it? Haven't I been acquitted without a stain on my character? I founded the British White Panther Party for reasons greatly different from the one for those my most my most my credit bleed. Either I that either earlier I had been leader of a notoriously unpleasant rock and roll band, made a number of albums I had. Attended more marches, demonstrations, rights, sit ins, pranks, and pieces of street art than I could tear to recall. Associated with dozens of scurly and desirables, possibly criminal characters. As if that wasn't enough for that, them to nail me, I committed my idea to satisfaction with authoritative consumer capitalism to print and hundreds of thousands of words, including rants, essays, monographs, and were at that point five novels and one work was non fiction, all dedicated to overthrow Western civilization. I wonder if John Dean might have enough of me enough to keep me out of my USA for the for the rest of my days, so so if so desired. As the interview continued, I found myself recounting a virgin of the previous sixteen years of my life and times, in a sense and hardly a bridge version that was nothing like the book you're about to read. Chapter one The House of the Chinese Landlord Each leg of the lion bedstead stood in a small pan containing about a quarter of an inch of liquid paraffin the pans most three inches thick across Perhaps that is a country cocoa tins. In the late winter of 1964, I had only limited experience of West uh, London flop houses, but I was certain these things related to a major insect infestation. By the age of 20, I wasn't totally unaware of the lower orders of life. As a student, I had to share my hard up wretchedness, particularly each term when the government grant was attended to last for three months. It was spent for three weeks on beer and beetle boots. I'm seeing cultures of alien bacteria growing in sinks of unwanted dishes. I've been in me of green gel welfare scientists and dirty laundry and gnawed so long that it threatened to glow in the dark. Oh, that and that was shouldn't please come with an underlying reassurance that one day we would come to man's estate, give up the poison for the one most. Except here I was, walking into a rented room in the house of a Chinaman, not only still unwashed, but apparently hitting bottom. I was no longer a student, and that was, might be close to man's estate as I was going to get. There was not a drill, not a real thing. I was unemployed and mainly unemployable. A bed in my new home seemingly had to be protected from molding bugs, a reason I was able to rent even in this place as low as on the food chain of accommodation was that I had made a relatively modest amount of money selling cocked at work, jumping dogs, in Oxford Street and Regent Street in a pri- week prior to Christmas. Now that Christmas had jingled all its bell and gone, Oxford and Regent Street had a hard place to sell anything, perhaps even your body. Aside from the smell of paraffin, presents existed in the room. Not sure whether it's not quite a stench, quite more of an emanation in every 
old and malevolent, deep-seated and ingrained in every walls. Had it more aggressive, H.B. Lovecraft might have given it an unprincipled name, but essentially was content merely to hang its own unvented air, because it knew it was already had me laid down, terrified. Individuality, no one, not one of its part was all that frightening. Jews, fluid, cooked cabbage and early grease, ten-year-old wood binds, early mineral bug powder, all fully incredulous when they are taken singly. A cocktail of misery was, however, rendered more daunting when Lent, coupled with the legend of the Chinese landlord who lived in the hermit-like installation, the ground floor flat front, floor front sharing his room almost normal bait sympathy the body of his dead father we sought to raise the money to ship it back to china as some astral place of the burial is more than enough to convince me i finally shunt to my new true level in the world a bottom feeder returning to primal slime in retrospect i was supposed to doubt there was a word of truth in the story of that lord lord and his late lamented father, the dreary twilight house of strange smells and forty what light light bulbs had lots of rooms. Only one of them was occupied. And Lord must have been raking in the cash. How much could it cost to ship the body of wizened and per- presumably mummified old man, even all the way all the way to China? I suspect the tall tale. It roots its both inmate racism and tender buildings other designs for more threadbare romance as part of a year or so earlier Bob Dylan played a bit part in a TV British BBC TV play Madhouse on Castle Street with about a house not altogether dissimilar to the one I was in. A video version however had a clock full groggy eccentric characters. Bob himself sat on the stairs singing and strumming his guitar. No such frolics in the house of the giant man, even if the boy's body was a fragment. Fragment. The place was still an atmosphere and mostly of a mausoleum. The other tenants were solitary, a male and Irish to a man. Labourers had taken the Dublin ferry in search of the better hourly rate working under the post war construction of Great London. A man in a Chinaman's house worked the wild boys of drink and sang and fought in local pubs of Friday and Saturday night. These were local sub-social inhabitants, far from the f- friends and family, could focus on a little bit of wage packet, sending it home or saving it for something better, or maybe just plain lost. Uh, 